Welcome, welcome, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is the King and I Like podcast, hosted by myself, Soul Touches the Poet, and my man, Son Soul Lex. We are back, we are back. The sounds that you are listening to the background is that artist that we interviewed, Sweat Artiste. Go check him out on all of those streaming platforms. Likewise, you can follow us on whatever podcast platform that you prefer. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and soon to be Patreon. And Sun Solex's favorite, definitely hit us up by email. K-I-N-G-A-N-D-E-Y-E-369 at gmail.com. You know what to do. Hit us up, hit us up, hit us up. So let's get the running, baby. For sure. Again, we want to thank everybody who uh, has actually sent in, you know, an email and chimed in with us and, you know, given us their perspective on certain things and more ideas on topics. So don't think we've forgotten about y'all because we haven't. Um, Definitely thank but, uh, Summer and uh, T for joining us talking about um the, the housing inequality thing. Uh, we definitely gonna follow back up with them because she's been doing a thing out there pounding the pavement and some of the things that she shared with us is just like heartbreaking, man. It is, it is. She she recently got back with us this, this past week and uh, I shared some information, a certain situation on our, our main page there on Facebook. So if you guys get a chance to uh, please stop by and check that out. It, it really is... Uh, I think some people need to have their ass locked up. <laughs> I'll be honest the, with you. All the way, no doubt, no doubt. Just uh, the way they're treating people out there is, is crazy yeah. and allowed to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, different topic, different day. But again, just uh, if you would look their information up, man. They, these these people are really do need help. So we're going to go ahead and kick this episode off with uh, our sponsor for today. This episode is sponsored by 96 Tires and Collision. They are located in Tweeds County, Georgia. Their address is 5610 State Road 96, Jeffersonville, Georgia 31044. Again, that address is 5610 State Road 96, Jeffersonville, Georgia 31044. They specialize in auto body work repairs, paint, and tires. 18-wheeler tires, travel trailers, mobile homes, ATVs, SUVs, or just a car or truck. Um, we got you covered. You've been in a fender bender. Your car needs a new look. We got you covered. Brand new paint job. They can do it. They're really good at their paint jobs. Yeah, they do a lot. Make, come out. Yeah, yeah. Make your ride look new again. Come see us at 96 Tires and Collision. Their phone number is 478-945-2458. Again, that number is 478-945-2458. Our business hours are from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Just swing by anytime Monday through Saturday. There you have so once again, thank, thank our sponsors for today. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So um, we're going to get back into this topic that we're going to follow up on um, interacting with today's law enforcement. As you know, we had a um, special guest on with us last time and um, with his law enforcement background, um, along with, you know, our individual experiences, mine, military and, and security and stuff like that. And even our interactions with law enforcement throughout our lives, um, although, you know, our experiences are different from what people before us and what people after us have experienced. But um, at the end of the day, you know, the, the, the my, I'll say minority experience with law enforcement is drastically different from the majority. Uh, we have unique challenges, although everybody has unique challenges. I, I think it's situational, but for the most part, we deal with it. Um, more drastic than others will. Um, and it, it is sad that they turn a blind eye to um, our experiences. But enough of that. We're going to just jump back into it. Um, is there anything that, that you've seen lately in the, in the uh, 
Well, let me back up. I don't know if you're aware of what happened with the with the guy who was walking across the street and the the the, the law enforcement officers were in their car talking about uh, you know one, they was going back and forth of, of whether they should uh, go stop him or whatever the case may be, but pretty much he was jaywalking. They went and bo- bothered him. Mm-hmm. Um, he was talking about why you stopping me, why you stopping me, blah blah blah. They put their hands on him for no reason wrestled him to the ground. One of them shouted, he got my gun, and then they end up shooting him. Um, gross misconduct, in my opinion. I saw the video. Um, it's just sad that him crossing the street, I'll say, because jaywalking, like, if you really that press to pull somebody over for jaywalking, you just, you just a shit ass. Um, and it's sad that it came to him losing his life over some bullshit like that. Uh, I'm not aware of, of that situation. Uh, I actually thought you were going to be talking about the young man in Texas where he was, I think he said he was leaving either work or school or something like that, 18 years old, just walking home and they put him in jail, just I walking. That one. So, um, before I forget, shouts out to uh, Broderick Williams. He was our, our, our guest yes, on this yes, yes. initial first episode. So shout out to him. Thanks again for coming on. Um, man, I, I'm so to this point, and this is just from a personal standpoint. Every time we turn around, we're seeing some BS like this or hearing about some BS like this. And I don't know, it, it's just like, I can see why other cultures just turn a deaf ear to it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because again, it, it's not someone from their community that's going through or having to experience it. But again, if you keep hearing about it, you know, day in, day out, of course your tolerance uh, level is going to drop and you, you're just not gonna care, you know? And right. again, it's, it's not your community. It's not someone, you know, of your, your uh, melanation. So you don't, you have two shits, to be honest. Yeah, it don't directly affect them, so yeah. don't want to worry about it. But, you know, at the end of the day, you, you have to think, you know, if you have any sort of humanity in your body, that has to bother you. Um, and, you know, the one thing that kind of bothers the hell out of me, you know, you know, a lot of people especially those who lean on religion, practice religion or whatever the case may be. And I don't want to turn this into a religious conversation, but right. some of them saying people sit in a church, get on their knees and pray um, and, and quote Bible verses and all this other shit, yet you have no problem taking a man's life who literally didn't do anything wrong and and those others who are practicing religion, you see this happening and you're silent. You know, these are people. Like, I don't understand why you're not making an uproar about it, but let it be little little Timmy, little Johnny, or whatever the case may be. Y'all going ballistic. Um, yeah. I don't get it. I don't get it. I, don't, I really don't get it. My whole thing about it is you see... Uh, people from other cultures getting a, a freaking uproar over a animal being mistreated right. or, or abused. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you see them come out in droves and armies, damn near. You know, over you know animals being mistreated. And again, I get it. You know, no, no animal should be mistreated. But when you see a human being, you know, someone who who who's living, breathing has a mind of their own, just, just trying to live, just trying to get by out here. You know, they're, they're not depending on anyone else to, to help take care of them. They're just trying to live their life, going about their business. And you know, just like that. You see situations where these people are being killed needlessly. Yeah. Because of someone else's ego. Or, or whatever and, they got going on at home. Or yeah. They're, they're in, in their deep-seated state that they were taught 
growing up or whatever the case may be. Um, but that leads me into the first question. Um, when a law enforcement official is fired for egregious attacks of misconduct, should they be banned from serving in that capacity? I totally believe they should be banned from serving in that capacity because they're not fit to serve in that capacity. Um, I know I mentioned earlier um, in the first part of this episode, um, if that was a military member who did that, there would be no hesitation for them to be held accountable for their actions, period. There are no if, ands, or buts, and I promise you that. Um, you know, when you get sent to war, you know, the people, people need to understand when you get deployed to a combat zone, you are out of your element. You're not at home. So you have this heightened stress of the job that some of these police officers are complaining about. Um, every day you wake up is and you're in danger. Every night when you go to bed, you're in danger. Um, when you walk in to go eat, you're in danger. So when they're making these excuses and everything, I, I can't relate to it because you're not in a foreign country. Um, when you say you want to make it home at night, your whole thing typically, typically is when you finish your job, you want to go home and lay in your bed. But when we're deployed, it's, we want to make it back to our base, not home to our bed, to our families, this, that, and other, where we're hoping to get a phone call, hoping to get an email, hoping to get a letter. So when it comes to that, um, I think if they get if they get fired or or even get reprimanded for egregious attacks, they should not be able to uh, hold that job ever ever again in life. No, I, I definitely feel like um, they shouldn't be able to return to to active um, duty, as they say. I mean, again, you and I both know there are circumstances and situations where you know an officer, you know has a split second to, to make a, a life and death decision. But when you have these situations, when you blatantly see these people going out of their way to attack someone who hasn't did anything to them, they just go on about their day. But you as an, uh, a, someone who, who wears this uniform, you're going out of your way to give this person hell. Like, where is your humanity? Where is, is do you have a soul? Yeah. I guess that would be a, a better. Yeah, that's the better question. Yeah. But as far as them being in a situation, again, where you, you may have to kill someone, I, I get it. You know, the, the whole, you know, you're suspended, let's investigate. And if the, the you know, that situation turned out to be a, a righteous situation, meaning, you know, you had no other choice but to take this person's life, then fine, so be it. But our main point is, I think, is the innocent people who are just going about their day. And I don't give a damn. I mean, yes, it happens a lot to, you know, people of our melanation, but it happens to other people of other cultures too. Let's let's be real. Um, so again, the thing about it is people are people. Right. They just want to live. They just want that right to live. And who the fuck are you to take away that right? Yeah, right. Because yeah. you have a badge and a gun. And and then, you know, the next day you go back to work and as if it's no big deal. Or let's say you do get fired, you know, you, hey, well, I got fired from this agency, but let me go apply to this agency and get hired. And, you know, whatever I did at that other agency don't fucking matter. And it's like, nah, that, that no, why is that okay? Because, you know, if, if I if I work for Target in one state and I get fired for whatever reason, and they tell me you can never work for Target again, I can't go to Target in another state and get hired because I'm in the database of people who cannot be hired. So, you know, for them, I, I think the, the police union needs to stop um, backing them when they're wrong. Um, 
I also think that if you get suspended for something like that, you should not be getting paid. Um, and or if you do get suspended with pay and you're found guilty or whatever the case may be, maybe that pay should get recouped because I don't I don't feel like you should be paid for something that you did when you messed up. You know, out in the civilian world, if you get suspended for something, you're not getting paid. Depending, nope. on, depending on what it is. And you might not even be able to use your vacation time to compensate for, for getting paid. So that needs to change. I definitely agree with you on that uh, point. If you are suspended uh, in a situation where someone lost their life um, during that whole investigation, I, I have to agree with you. I, I think that you shouldn't receive pay. I mean, if the investigation is completed and you're found innocent, you know, it, it's a it's a righteous self-defense situation, then yes, you should get your money back. Yeah. But if you kill someone needlessly for, for no other reason other than, you know, I got a badge and a gun and I can do well the F I feel like, then no, as soon as you're suspended, they should stop your pay. Yeah. And no, you shouldn't be allowed to go to a, another state or another city and sign right back up like nothing's ever happened. Yeah. And, you know, some of those cases are, are so cut and dry for me that it just doesn't make no sense that they get off. Like a lot of these um, jurisdictions, you cannot engage in a police chase. So if you if you think about these needless shootings in terms of a police chase so in a police chase for you know all intents and purposes you are in a police car you and a couple of other officers are in police cars chasing a car speeding down the road or weaving in and out through traffic in a city you are not supposed to engage in those so if it's so easy for you not to break that directive why is it okay for you to shoot someone in the back when they're running from you i don't understand how your life is in danger if someone is running from you they don't have they visibly don't have a weapon they are not a threat to your safety or life. They're running from you. If your ass can't catch them, chalk it up as a goddamn loss. Call your backup, say, hey, I think he's in this vicinity. Do a fucking search or whatever the case may be. But if somebody is running from you and you shoot them in the back, why should you get off with a slap on the wrist? That makes no sense to me. Um, then you mentioned about split second decisions. Yes. You have to make split second decisions. But part of the problem is, as I mentioned before, the use of force continuum. If you are going straight from a calm position and escalated all the way up to pulling out your gun, you, you pretty much eliminated your options because you know you pull your gun out, you already got your hand on the trigger, especially depending on what color that person is. So yeah you know, your, your, your quick jerk muscles are going to pull that trigger and instead of, you know, trying to de-escalate that situation. Exactly. And the whole thing about, you know, again, what you're saying about somebody running away from you, what kind of threat are they to you? I, I, I get that. These people form no freaking threat to you whatsoever. And I think some some officer in situations like that, they get in a feel like, who the fuck are you to run away from me? Like, based on the history of, you know, needless and countless of people being killed in this country, when you see someone running away from you, then you, why do it not click in your head? Okay, this person is scared of me. Yeah. Again, yeah. and we're talking about situations where someone hasn't done or did anything yeah or nothing to the degree that you need to pull out your gun and shoot exactly like if i snatch away from you that's no reason for you to pull your gun out on me especially if you got a damn taser yep 
especially if you've been taught defensive tactics and how to take a person down, you don't need to pull out your gun. I mean, I, I, I get it as far as like, again, someone's attacking you. Yeah, you damn right. Pull your gun by all means. Defend yourself. As a human being, that's what you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. But as someone who, who represents a, a whole state or community, you know, when you pull that gun on someone who's running away from you, you're a coward to me. A whole coward. You're a coward. coward. But again, this this just just doesn't happen in, in our community. So other other cultures they go through it too, but it's more publicized with our community. Yeah. And I, I think that's one of the things that that has, you know, our people uh, really in an uproar is every time we turn around, we're seeing that image. So it, it's kind of like psychological warfare, basically, because you're, you're putting this image out here and you're making or you're wanting uh, people of darker hue to be afraid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's that's one of the, the major things I get from it. Yeah. I wanted to touch on something because I had posted a, a, a comment or I made a post or something, I think, on my personal Facebook page. It, it, it was either on my personal Facebook page or on the King and I Life Facebook page. And this dude that I know that I went to school with in Germany, he had the audacity to say, something to the effect of what about the, st- the statistics of um, police brutality against whites that often goes untalked about. Um, and he alluded to that it happens more to whites than it does blacks. Now, the thing I want to say about that, that is a, a, a very true statement. It is a very accurate statement. But it's irrelevant because whites, Caucasians, or whatever you want to call them, they outnumber us. You know, I think what minorities are probably what, I I don't know what percent of the population that we are in America, and I don't mean just blacks, I mean, Hispanics, uh, um, immigrants of, you know, of, of all backgrounds, yes, that is true that it happens more to whites than it does to blacks because y'all definitely outnumber us. But the problem with that is we've been dealing with this unfairly for so long that that is the issue. It's not an issue of, oh, well, it happens more to this race, that race, this, that. That's not the issue. The issue is it's always been so unfairly done to us. And it it largely goes unaddressed. Um, and, And then when you look at the brutality of it, it's like that was unnecessary. Yes, they do the same to pretty much everyone, every racial background, depending on where you are. But the history of it for us and that it still goes on today is what the issue is. You know, I don't want to, I'm not downplaying how it happens to anybody, but no. you know, we all know if you're of a lighter skin tone, you're least likely to encounter this type of behavior. But because you're of a lighter skin tone and this happens to everybody, Yet is going to be more of you that it happens to because it's so many more of you than it is of us. Um, as far as that uh, talking point, um, when it comes down to his opinion, I respect your opinion. I, I don't know you. But at the same time, I don't believe the st- statistics. Um, and this is just my personal belief. I don't believe that they outnumber us. And that's, again, just my personal opinion. No, my no, own. no, no, my white people, they outnumber us. That's what I'm talking about. No, <laughs> From my own personal there's, research, there's, I, 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 I just don't, I, I can't go along with that. I, I just say I, I 
respectfully disagree. Really? Um, yeah. You don't think it's more white people in America than blacks? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe that. And again, this is going off of my own personal research. This isn't what mm. someone else has, has told me or going off of uh, general census, as they say. But uh, the point that I'm making here is, yes, this does happen to other, other cultures and other people in their communities. But it's nowhere near as much publicized as it is for us. I, I think we all can agree on that. Um, again, every time you turn on the news, you, you see one of us, you know, in a compromising position, i.e., in handcuffs or being shy or being mistreated or or something crazy like that. And I I don't think people actually get that it's programming. The more we see these images, the more uh, it it plays a psychological uh, role in your head. Like every time you see a cop, do you do you cringe or do you think to yourself, "Well, let me let me straighten up"? I mean, people don't don't stop and think about that stuff. But again, I I respect uh, his opinion if, if that's the way he feels not trying to take anything away from any other community, but again, from my personal research and my own personal encounter, encounters with police officers, of course, we're going to feel some kind of way. Mm. Yeah. So have police interactions changed for the worst over the last 40 years, you think? No, I don't think they've changed for the worst. Um, and I say that because when you, if you look at it from a historical point of view, the reason why sheriffs and all of that were, came into place and all that was to round up runaway slaves. And um, if you look at it from that perspective, when they went out and got these runaway slaves, they beat them. Then they brought them back to the master and the master beat them um, openly, publicly, freely, without recourse. It was okay for that to go on, leading up to death. And it was no problem for them to do that. Um, it was often brutal. It was often, often savage. Um, and, you know, every other slave had to look at that and, and use that as a message. If this is what you do, this is what you're going to get. Um, I would also interject that moving forward from that, um, when you move up to more recent times, you know, Jim Crow, uh, um, the uh, uh, civil rights movements, this, that, and the other, it was still done in a matter which was more so okay, but it was more laws against doing that. Um, then when you move further through time, it became illegal for those things to occur not saying that they did not occur, but it wasn't happening as much as it was before. Now, I will also add that there are cases where it's like, what the fuck, like really? Y'all really did that? But overall, I think, I don't think things have changed for the worse. Um, you know, a lot, and here's another thing, a lot of people even I have said it before, um, that it's more visible than it was. It's actually not to a degree. It's more visible as more, more, it's more visible today than it was because a lot of people have cell phones and people can post things on social media, blah, blah, blah. If you really take a look back in history, 
if you look at all these old documentaries and, and, and news broadcasts and this, that, and the other, you will see how they just freely let the dogs out on people, the police dogs. You will see how they beat people with batons. It was on the news. You can see how um, they did a whole bunch of things, even, even down to spraying them with water hoses. Now, you're not going to see that type of behavior happening on your nightly news anymore. So to a degree, I don't think it's gotten worse. It's just that it's more accessible than it was. I, I would totally agree with you on that, on uh, all talking points. Um, I don't, for the last 40 years, has it changed? Hell no. Has it gotten worse? Um, that's debatable. Um, again, I, I think, you know, what you're saying about it being more accessible or widespread to, to a certain degree, I totally vibe with that because you have more way more outlets to to actually see what's going on than you did you know in the last 40 years mm -hmm. that's for sure so i can't I, I have nothing else to add to that you you pretty much hit that one you know nail on the head so yeah because i mean if, if you look at what happened to um if you look what happened to george floyd Ahmaud Aubrey, um, Orlando Castro, um, the young man who was choked out in New York City. Um, if you look at all of these situations right here, people had cell phones. If you look at those same situations that happened 40, 50, 60, 70, 100 years ago, People just saw those things with their own eyes. So they couldn't spend it on YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter, and this, that, and the other. Um, equally, when you see riots today, or marches, or whatever the case may be, the news may be there, the news may not be there, but you'll have a thousand cell phones there showing you what the news is not there to see. So. I just think it's more accessible as, as as opposed to, you know, when it wasn't more accessible. Um, and I'll also say that it's not worse because you have to realize that back in the day, police would drive by in a car and I'm um, just gonna be blunt. Hey nigga, what you doing over here? You don't have that happening as much as it was back in those days. So right. to that effect, it's not ha has gotten worse. Um, Cause you're not normally going to see a police officer today walk up to a group of blacks or whoever and just assert himself, pushing them and harassing them. Again, I'm not saying it does not happen, but it's not right. happened as much and it's not going to happen to the degree that it used to happen. Definitely. I mean, one of the, the things that, you know, I want to make sure people know here, we are in no way bashing police officers. That, that's not what we do here. Oh, no. We I'm are. A minute when I need them. Yeah, we, we are just speaking on certain aspects of, of what's going on in the world today. Um, Again, I, I know plenty of, as far as I know, good police officer, and I'm sure you do too. Yes, for a while. So, again, we, we just want to make it known we are not bashing good police officers. No shape, form, or fashion here. Um, one of the, the, the points, me and a, a friend of mine who, who's happened to be a law enforcement officer, we, we talked about was good cops, bad cops, right? We're on that, that subject. And another one of our friends made the statement of, if there are good cops, why do the good cops let the bad cops get away with the shit they get away with? 
<laughs> and my friend, my friend, he kind of, you know, paused for me. He was like, that's a good question. I, I can't speak for other officers, but what I can say is there is kind of like this unwritten rule um, when it comes down to certain police um, departments or um, agencies. Um, and he didn't want to go in too much depth about it, but I, I kind of got the odds and end of, of what he was saying. And it's basically, you know, at the end of the day, people are here to, to feed their families. I, I kind of get that. But you and then he also, but he also made a point of, you know, if you can't handle that, then you should quit. And he kind of left it at that. So, you know, I didn't push it. And my other friend, we didn't, we didn't push him, you know, cause again, we, we know what kind of stuff he has to, to go through, you know, in that line of work. So, but then you have to look at it like this, that doesn't just happen with police. And, and I know this is about police, but that starts somewhere. It, it starts at home. It starts when you're a little kid hanging with your friends. It starts when you start, when you get into middle school and high school and you start hanging with your clique. It starts when you um, start playing sports. It starts when you work any job. It's in the military, it's everywhere. You, even in, in um, it happens in gangs. It's like you either with us or you're against us. You know, you notice when you were little kids and there's like, let's say three, four, five little kids hanging out. And one of those little kids said, oh, I'm telling if y'all do this, that, and the other. Well, if you tell, we're going to beat you up. What you going to do? You're going to tell or you're going to get beat up? Like, wh what you going to do? So when it comes back to law enforcement, it's if you open your mouth, we're going to make it bad for you. Um, oh. It doesn't concern you, so mind your business. Um, it's the good old boy click. If you're not in the good old boy click, then you definitely better not say nothing, or or else it's some, something's going to happen to you or your family. Um, and and it can get that drastic to the point to where it's like, you know, what do I say? Um, you might have a situation to where you might have a group of black or white officers or whatever. Um, uh, background they're from and you may have one or two who are of a different background or of a different mindset and that unwritten rule is that unwritten rule could be a look like yo this is what we do mind the business um so it, it's a hostile work environment and i wouldn't say if you don't like it quit um because if you don't like it, quit, then you leave room for that behavior to grow and, and keep going. But um, definitely, I, I, I get, you know, the thing about it is, again, like you said, when we were growing up, we had situations where, you know, people would be like, um, you know, if you tell them, we're going to beat your ass. <laughs> so, again, I, I think it, it comes back to one of those things uh, at that point, uh, whatever agency you're with, you really have to ask yourself that question of, is this the, the type of life I wanna live where I'm constantly having to look the other way? Um, do, do I constantly want to, you know, have to look myself in the mirror and, and tell myself, you know, just get through the day, just get through the day. Yeah. Well, everybody, we're going to uh, stop our, our part of it or this portion of it right here. But again, we want to thank everybody for tuning in to the King of Eye Life podcast. Uh, we, we enjoy having everyone on um, and we'll pick this back up. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. That is, this is the follow-up to interaction with law enforcement. Um, again, Follow us on, on whatever podcast platform you prefer. 
email us, king and i369 at gmail.com. Check us out oh. on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, soon as on Patreon.